Hello, my name is Caleb Perry, and for this art presentation talk number two, I'm going to be talking about the painting Napoleon crossing the Alps. And uh, just a little uh, foreclosure, if I mispronounce anything, I am extremely sorry. So when I'm talking about Napoleon, um, it's important to know that I'm not talking about Napoleon Dynamite. The Napoleon I'm talking about is Napoleon Bonaparte, and he was a famous uh, French leader um, during the French Revolution. He was actually the French Empire, and he ate hold of a lot of other positions, but he's most famously known for being uh, the Emperor of, of France. So going into some setting, um, here's the actual painting, uh, Napoleon Crossing the Alps. Um, but before we go into any uh, detail with this painting, I kind of want to give some historical context. So um, he was the first consul of the French Republic, and what one of his goals was was to retake the French territory from the Austrians. And the way he did that was by going through the Alps, which was through the Great St. Bernard Pass. And so with uh, this kind of voyage going through the Alps, he was able to have the element of surprise on his enemies. And because of that, he was able to win this this battle. And it was later called the Battle of Marengo. Uh, Charles IV, um, after the victory, kind of gave um, some gifts to Napoleon. And one of those was to have a portrait of himself to be made. So the creator of this painting, uh, the painter is called Jacques Louis David, and he was a strong supporter of the French Revolution. Um, he gained a lot of notoriety and fame for having a, um, a lot of his previous paintings um, centered around the French Revolution. Um, one thing I thought that was interesting is that he used Napoleon's head um, in the sketch, but the rest of his body is not Napoleon's. Napoleon actually uh, had his son um, pose for the rest of his body. I guess it gave him more of a youthful look and made him look a little bit more fit. Moving in to uh, the description of the painting, um, I want to go over some kind of like symbolic elements and, uh, and a lot of detail that was put into this. So first we have this this gesture and uh, he's kind of pointing up at a diagonal slant um, and he's sort of commanding this horse to, uh, to basically go forward, as well as his soldiers, and some would even say that he is, uh, gesturing to the whole landscape around here to sort of, like, rise up and, and move forward, uh, towards this victory. He, he's also not wearing a glove with this, with this hand, and he does have a glove on this hand, so... With this gesture, it's uh, it could be interpreted that he is more of a peacemaker than he is a conqueror. Next up is his eyes. So if you look at his eyes, he is looking directly at the viewer. So this brings a whole uh, whole another element to the painting. It, cre it creates a, a uh, an interconnectedness, and it kind of urges the, the the viewer to sort of join him on this voyage. As, uh, as he leads everyone into victory. Next up is the horse. So as you can see here, the horse is sort of rearing back and kind of wild and, and, and out of control and everything. Excuse me. So this could be a symbol of, of France itself. If you notice here um, how he's holding the reins and, and controlling him, he's doing it in a very calm manner. Um, and he's also doing it with one hand too. And so this is sort of like the vision that he that he uh, wants other people to view. Um, he views himself as you know bringing order and having a nice calm control over France um, for the post-revolutionary uh, phase. Uh, the, the next uh, element is inscription. So on the bottom here, you will see his uh, his last name Bonaparte inscribed in this stone here and if you look below it it's it's cut off in the original painting but uh this is supposed to mean hannibal and he was a, a famous a military commander as well as charles the great right here 
and uh, this basically they, they have basically all crossed the Alps in their lifetime and so this is a sort of a passing on the torch uh, to Napoleon here and it's sort of uh, you know the it sort of gives rise to the next successor so the reason why I uh, chose this painting and the reason I'm so interested in it is because Napoleon utilized these paintings to alter his image um, and that had to do a lot with propaganda so he was kind of able to to show he was he gave people a mindset of what he was like and it sort of romanticized what he actually was and uh, what's remarkable about that is that this whole concept sort of transcends time um, you know, especially in, in today's, you know, day and age, you know, with technologies and everything, we're able to manipulate our photos and, and shop them up and everything, especially with Photoshop, and we're able to kind of uh, change the way that things really aren't. <laughs> and here are my references. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching, and have a blessed day.